We're live. Welcome back to the Hank Strange Studio, where tonight we will sip on the blood of our enemies from this skull cup. That's right. I don't, I don't know if that's is that too vicious, William. It's probably no. Too, I don't think so at all. No, not too vicious. Okay, cool. We will sip on the blood of our enemies <laughs> live from the Big Daddy Gun Studio. Myself, Hank Strange, and we have a special guest tonight, Mr. William Wound of the Wound Channel. How you doing, What's William? Up? What's up, man? I'm doing pretty good. I'm so, doing pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm doing good as well, man. You know, this is something like a little bit unique for me because I've never met you before. <laughs> right. And it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. So we don't, a, we don't know do, each other. <laughs> not at all. No. I, I do some live streams uh, sometimes to open some of the subscription boxes that I get every month. But other than that, I'm not as familiar with live streaming with other people. So there'll probably be that talking over lag, you know. Yeah, that's Talking over cool. each other kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We're, we're gun guys. We do that. <laughs> we do that kind of thing. You know, a lot of alpha dogs yapping. That's, that's right. I say. So I think it's going to be fun at the end. I, I hope it's going to be fun. I mean, we've never met each other, so we'll see what happens by the end of this. You know, but um, you want to – let's start out by telling the folks, uh, you know, <clears throat> where are you, what's your channel all about, et cetera. So I'm in North Carolina. I'm right near uh, Fort Bragg which is, they tell me, the largest uh, army base on the Continental 48. It certainly okay. looks like it. it. certainly looks like it when you go near it. And uh, so, you know, hot hot and humid. And I, uh, I basically do mostly uh, ballistics gel, body armor type of videos, and then also some, like, gun and gear type of reviews. You know, like, to, for me personally, I like doing videos that are um, – that you actually learn something. So I, I like to use a gun to test a particular kind of ammo, a particular armor plate or something like that. So I struggle a little bit doing just the more traditional review videos because I, I want to actually do something with uh, whatever the thing is. But okay. that, that's mostly what my channel focused around. I got um, the first videos that I did that actually got any kind of appreciable views were body armor ones. I was one of the one of the first people to shoot M193 through steel body armor, which was kind of a it, it's it's very common with people that are familiar with body armor now, and everybody does videos like this. But um, it's a uh, you know, level three steel body armor that'll stop 308 won't stop some 556. Okay. Which is kind of, um, you know, counterintuitive. Yeah. So, um, so I was one of the first people to do that and then kind of kept doing the body armor stuff because questions always come up. You know, it's like, we tried that. Well, then what about this? And what about that and stuff? And then obviously, you know, the name Wound Channel from the Wound Channel in a, you know, ballistics gel or whatever. So I do like doing ballistics gel stuff. It's just uh, tough to keep uh, behind the gel blocks. Yeah. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. So how did you decide to start doing it? What made you decide to do a, you know, a YouTube channel? And how long so this, ago was this? So that's the number one question that people ask me is, what, why did you start doing videos? I've been interested in doing videos and I've liked, I've had a video camera since I was like, you know, probably 15, just like filming stuff. Mm -hmm. And I really started on YouTube with uh, drag racing videos. So I used to always oh, go to the drag strip, race cars. My buddies all are into cars. We still are. And, um, Car guys are not all that much different from gun guys, and uh, it, it crosses over a lot, right? Right, right. Car circles. guys, they love to argue, and they can usually never agree on anything, especially who won if a race was close. So I kind of always was there with the video camera to get the proof or the evidence, and then just track days and stuff. You know, I was just being interested in videography or whatever you want to call it. I, I always did that. So I uploaded tons and tons of car videos to YouTube before I ever got serious about producing you know like being a youtuber you know it was really just a place for me to host the videos mm -hmm. and then being that i like guns too i started messing around with some of the gun videos and then it in the beginning there it transitioned i was like i had half car stuff and whatever and then as time went on i kind of changed the background and um you know changed the name and all that stuff and just so is there are there any are there any car videos on your channel now not anymore now i deleted <clears throat> after a while once i got heavy into the gun stuff i deleted all the Okay. All the car went off, but I, I did start another um, channel where I, I dump car videos on too. But I hardly have anything on there. But um, you know, I don't go to the drag strip hardly ever anymore. Oh, okay. Not and not into cars anymore so much. Mm. Right. That's not true. Okay. Still big into cars. Just just don't get to the track as much as I'd like. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, I do a little bit of car stuff on my channel. I, I like cars, man, and I think there's a good crossover, like you said, that. You know, typically uh, car guys are into guns unless they're communists. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they like things that are loud and fast. You're a Mopar yeah. guy, right? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I own a Mopar car. Okay. And I like Mopar, but that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily, you know, pigeonholed into the Mopar thing. It's this is the uh, Challenger that I have is the first Mopar that I ever owned. I think. Okay. No, actually, no, that's not true. I have a I have an RV that's Mopar that I bought a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that we're working on. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's my current okay. car. But what's okay, funny? So what are you saying? Are you are you a um, you know, you're a Corvette guy? Well, that's that's the ironic <laughs> thing about me calling you a Mopar guy is that um, I'm not I'm not married to a brand or anything either. I've been a Mustang guy for a long time. My first like mm -hmm. hot rod was a Fox body Mustang, which I still own, and I had like oh, wow. four other Mustangs after that. But um, I think I think the Corvette thing was just that I could finally afford one. That's <laughs> yeah. probably most yeah. of it. So yeah, that looks. Was that a Stingray? Yeah, it's a C7 Stingray. Yeah. Nice man. Those those are really cool. I'd love to get one of those. Yeah, they're cool. You know, I especially like uh, in the, I think it's in the glove box. No, is it the radio where you've got that little thing that comes down and you can hide a yeah. little gun back there? Shield fits in there perfect, actually. Shield? Yeah, that's yeah. freaking awesome. You know, um, I also like the fact that it's basically, I don't think you can get more than two people in there. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely just a two-seater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, unless you're going to throw someone in the little hatch in the back. You know, but it's sexy. <laughs> the styling, I mean, I think... Other than if you go back to the classic, uh, you know, the the, the classic um, Corvettes, the classic Stingrays, is the best looking one to me. Yeah, I know a lot of people were uh, weirded out by the non-round uh, taillights, but I, I love everything about it. And it's um, <clears throat> my buddies, a couple of my friends have Corvettes, and the best way they could explain it is that the interior is so much nicer than the previous generation. It feels like they skipped one. Mm -hmm. It feels like they skipped like 10 years ahead in the because Corvettes were kind of known for having so so interiors, you know, cheap Chevy likes to reuse stuff from Cobalts and Malibus and everything else. So right. $60,000 sports car with a Cobalt steering wheel, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I think that um, I mean the styling and everything on it. It's really cool. I think it looks a lot like a, you know, it looks like a like a Ferrari. Yeah, more supercar looking. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of cool things about it, man. Um, how's the and the gas mileage? I think is even better than what you're getting in a lot of the other muscle cars, right? In that category. Yeah, like I grew up in uh, northeastern Ohio, and I've I've driven it up there and back, which is 600 miles each way. I got like 32 miles per gallon. Wow, um, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say like I can get 25 miles per gallon out of the the Challenger, okay. which is like if you think about back in the days. I think the most you can get out of it was like eight, ten miles per gallon. Yeah, older cars are yeah, anything old like that is terrible. Yeah. yeah. But for I mean the Corvette's awesome with that, man. I mean, you know, it's not a hybrid, but <laughs> yeah. It's close to economy in my in my mind, that's economy. And it does that thing where it'll go on like four cylinders or six yeah. cylinders or whatever when so that that helps too. Yeah, I think that technology is pretty cool, man. Uh what do you think? I know we're on this car thing, but I think it's a good what do you think about how there's a lot of uh, like um, you know we're getting V6s with twin turbos and stuff like that you know or four cylinders with turbos. What do you think about all that stuff? And we're not we're moving away from V8s. Well, my my favorite part about that would be the Coyote engine in the Mustangs. Mm -hmm. So for from ever since 1996 when they introduced the mod motor, you know the 4.6 when they got away from the 5.0, they've always been kind of a dog if you compare them to anything in a Camaro, right? So from like 96 all the way till they quit making Camaros, um, they, they never held, and they were never close, right? I mean, a, a mod for mod, stock for stock, a Camaro would always trash uh, a Mustang. And that all changed with the new 5.0 and the Coyote because they took all that technology from the four-cylinder engines and actually used it. So instead of just making a like gluing two 2.3 liter shitty Ford motors together, they actually you know used like the valve angles and the you know the intake runners are shaped and they got the variable valve timing like a Honda VTEC or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's great from the aspect that we can take that technology from the little engines and use it mm -hmm. on the big ones because I still yeah, believe there's yeah. no replacement for displacement. Yeah, so you're not like a fan of how like even V8s are going away. I know the V12s kind of went away. For the most part, except in is it, are there any supercars left with V12s? Not really, not that many. Mm, no, but maybe something yeah. weird like a Kona Seg or something. But I don't know. I yeah. couldn't name one because uh, I know they went down to V10s, and and now you know it's like a V8. When I bought the Challenger, Lola thought I was getting a V6, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Why is this thing expensive like this?" And I said, uh, 
because it's a Hemi. <laughs> because reasons. <laughs> she's like, yeah. She's like, why? Why? So why do you need that? And I was like, what are you talking about, woman? <laughs> it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that thing. But I sold, you know what, when I sold her with it, uh, with launch control. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, she loves launch control. I don't. How's the launch control on the Corvette? It's good. A lot of the traction control systems are set up for road racing, so they've got this, mm -hmm. like, uh, race one, race two, dry, wet, whatever. Okay. Um, so a lot of them are with respect to not losing traction when you're coming out of a turn, but it does have, like, a launch whatever, but at yeah. the drag strip and everything, I've always done better without it. I turn all that crap off and... I do it my way. Yeah, someone says you don't buy it for the gas mileage. That's really true. Um, I always thought about <laughs> this is this is gonna probably it sounds crazy to me now, but all the cars I've had before, I thought about gas mileage, what it what gas costs. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know about I don't know what you put into the Corvette, but in the Challenger, I only put in premium. Yeah, yeah, same. So, yeah, so I don't even look at the price now. This sounds really horrible. <laughs> when but, I'm pulling it into a gas station, Lola's like, uh, what's the price? I was like, woman, it is, it's premium. <laughs> Why even waste your time looking at what the price of gas is? Just it does. pull it in, pump it. <laughs> reminds me of that meme that says, I just want to make enough money so that I can stare off into the distance while I'm pumping my gas. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's true. We don't care about the gas mileage, so... Um, All right, so 904 says his Hemi gets 14.8, so that's pretty similar uh, probably to the city, you know, hammer hammer down, the foot to the floor kind of mileage. Yeah, so I guess his, yeah, his doesn't cut off to the four cylinders then. Okay. <laughs> you know, because I think in just driving around in the city, I get like 20-something, like 22. Oh, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and that because it cuts off to the cylinders, so I'm not sure what not, what 904 uh, what year his is and if they had it back then he'll let us know he's a very Probably mechanical guy yeah all in the way you drive too yeah so someone um i don't know why you still got this here lola what's his channel all about ballistics and body armor so yeah we went over that we went over the the ballistics and body armor thing and that you you know you do other stuff but that's like the main do you feel trapped into doing that now since you started off with doing it that people want to see ballistics and body armor stuff on your channel no i don't think so i think i i think i kind of display even when i do like hey i got this gun you know i'm just gonna like like this one right here this was a arrow precision build that i put together you know oh, and very even cool. just, even yeah, no, you can go ahead and show it here let me lock it on you let me lock the channel on you so we can see this gun here so it's, they, they do these monthly um uh, Cerakote jobs, okay. you know, where they, they do like a builder set or whatever. So it's an upper, a lower trigger guard and a hand guard or whatever. And they do like a different pattern or whatever every month. I'm trying to get it on my screen there. There we go. Yeah. And Arrow then, Precision are good guys. We know um, we know Bob and Mark over. Right. Well, well, but actually Bob's at Arrow Precision. Bob and Mark and, uh, are from Fire Mountain Outdoors. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. So, um, you know, even doing something like that, you know, I try and do like some actual shooting with whatever the thing is. So even if I'm just doing, you know, like I had a Anvil, the 458 SOCOM from CMMG. Mm -hmm. And I, I did one where I shot, um, <clears throat> I made a, a block of jello that was the size of a ballistics gel block. Because I get these comments all the time where people are like, well, do this to the jello or, or just because it did that to the jello. To, and they think that the clear ballistics gel is, is uh, as weak as jello. Mm -hmm. Which Jello is like this much stronger than water, you know. You can it, it, I, I demonstrate in the video, but it's it's very very weak and it just blew all to pieces with a uh, 458, which the gel block didn't, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, even when I'm doing more of a review kind of video, I try and incorporate some kind of a test with it. So I don't think that uh, I don't think that I get a lot of comments about people that are disappointed in anything. The, the only disappointed comment I get is I did this never shot a gun before mm -hmm. series for volunteers that have never shot before. And I have every day I get inundated with comments. You got to do more of those. You got to do more of those, which is I want to because they're fun. It is just yeah. exceedingly hard to find volunteers. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So are these people that are not gun guys? And obviously, if they're not, if they don't, if they never shot before. Yeah, people that have literally never shot a gun. And um, what it started with was an argument that I had with a, uh, a writer on um, – the firearm blog about which was more intuitive an AR 15 or an AK 47. Mm -hmm. And I kind of found a new way to add some fuel to the AR AK fire. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which like, like you know, it, need, it doesn't that. need it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't need it. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it was my opinion that an AR, if you just gave it to somebody who had no idea what they were doing, an AR would be easier to figure out. Okay. You know? 
Mm-hmm. And so that, that was kind of how it started was, you know, would set one down and, and let them try each and see if they could figure it out. And then I kind of started branching out into different guns. But, you know, we get this perception all the time in the media and, um, you know, news and basically any, any anti-gun people always try and make guns out to be this horrifically evil thing that anybody in the world could just pick up and murder an entire, you know, country with or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not the case. You know, I mean, if it's, it's, it's actually the things that people struggle with would surprise you when they have no clue. You know, they never touched a gun before. Um, most of the time, they couldn't get it. They couldn't fire a single shot. They could not get it to run. Oh, okay. So, yeah. is that because they didn't know about the safety, or like, what do you what do you typically run into with guys who've never shot and don't really know about guns? So the AK, if you leave the safety on when you put mm-hmm. it on the table, most people won't take it off. Mm-hmm. Most people push the um, dust cover button a bunch. Yeah, and- <laughs> yeah, that's, that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the the one volunteer actually popped the dust cover off, and uh, um, but anyway, uh, they either can't get the magazine in the AK or they can't get the safety off because it doesn't yeah. look like it's, to me and you. I mean, it's it's hard to imagine not knowing where the safety is. Yeah, but dude, half the time I can't get the magazine into the AK. <laughs> right, me too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I always the try to do these cool. Like whenever I do an AK video, I try to do the cool. Like, watch me rock this in, you know. Or I get <laughs> yeah. real fancy and I try to knock it off with one magazine. And put the other one in. Right. It yeah, looks no. bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. So uh, what happens at the end of those videos with uh, people who haven't shot? How do they typically come? I mean, do they feel worse about the guns or do they feel more interested? What happens? So, so the, the number one priority for me when I do the videos is safety. So the four rules are the first thing I explain to them. And then at, at all times, I make sure that they're not doing anything that's, you know, excuse me, unsafe for themselves or unsafe for me. And then set, my second priority is to make sure that they come away at the end liking guns. Okay. <laughs> so that's why, like, we had some volunteers that were of smaller stature, and we didn't give them, like, a Desert Eagle or a shotgun or something stupid like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, I always hate those. Anyways, like, like, have you, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've seen this, where, like, some guy has his girlfriend or his wife shooting a big, massive gun, and right. she doesn't have any idea what she's doing, and he thinks, man, this is going to go viral on YouTube. Right. Yeah, it's horrible. You know? yeah. yeah, and then she hurts herself, or you know, that's not the. Don't introduce people to guns that way. If right. you know so, better, show them something better. And if you don't know better, you definitely should not be introducing people to anything. <laughs> right. So I do get a lot of comments from people that don't understand the point. So the the, the point of the video is for these, you know, uh, nice people to volunteer their time to show us what somebody would struggle with. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they, they didn't have any instruction. I don't really know what they're doing, but it's not, it's not for me to laugh at them or for me to like, you know, like you said, hurt somebody with a big gun or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so the idea is uh, they try one, they try the other. We talk about what it was they struggled with. Then if they can't, if they get stuck, eventually we'll help them. And then um, at the end of it, after we're done doing the video, all the volunteers, I've taught them whatever they wanted to know, the right way to stand, the right way to yeah. hold it, all that kind of stuff to try and produce more gun love. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that's the way to go about it. I mean, I see, sometimes you see this in gun stores, you see it in other places where people jump all over, uh, you know, folks that are new to this, and then just makes them think, man, these gun guys are assholes. <laughs> you know, like, no, it's not, it's, it's not a clip. There's no such thing. What are you talking about a clip? It's a magazine. Okay, I get it, you know. Just nicely explain that to people because if you... You know, when you do those kinds of things, you really turn people off. And the worst one is when that happens in gun stores. Yeah, no doubt. So the the funny thing is, like, you know, uh, I live near that giant army base, right? So it's almost impossible, and it's in the south. Mm-hmm. So it's almost impossible to find somebody who, one, hasn't been through basic, because everybody in this town. You know, <laughs> and then it's the south. I mean, people are born shooting. And then the, yeah, then it's the south, so they're shooting. So it's like, you know. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's like people are like, well, just ask whoever. Like, I get these comments all the time. Ask your waitress. Ask whoever. It's like. Let me break this down for you, and, and, and why don't you try and, and put yourself in the shoes of a stranger? And then you get somebody like me, probably wearing a shirt like this, It <laughs> yeah. says, hey, uh, do you want to go shoot guns in the woods? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And like, I'm about to go all deliverance on your ass. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any instructions, and I'm going to film it and put it on YouTube. Everybody's probably yeah. going to laugh at you. It's going to be it awesome. Not go over that well. <laughs> no, I know. Um, I'm getting requests. People want to see, um, see your end path. Oh, the NPAP. Yeah, yeah I can, do you have that? 
Yeah, I have it downstairs. I can go oh, get it's that. Oh, downstairs. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll have to we'll have to we'll have to do some stuff while William runs down there and gets the MPAP, you know. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to scroll through these yeah. comments real quick cuz when I do yeah. live streams, I, I hate to leave people out. I I answer yeah. just about every comment I get on my channel. Yeah, absolutely. Go through and see um Oh, it was Rob that asked for the MPAP <laughs> figures. Rob <laughs> Wob is lost as a buddy of mine, so that's not surprising oh, cool. that he asked for the MPAP. Okay. But, yeah. Let's see. Okay, Someone says that Silverado gets 22 miles per gallon, which is which is not bad. That's probably like a newer Silverado. That's true, yeah. If it gets 22 miles per gallon. That's Direct cool. injected and everything. Yeah. yeah. I thought there's going to be people complaining about the car thing, but, you know, as we said, there's, these are gun guys. So, yeah, man, go get that, and we'll just talk about some stuff. We'll, you know, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about you bad while you're gone. <laughs> right. I will be right back. You know, we'll talk about how you're a secret ginger. <laughs> you have a ginger – beard you know he, he blocked the channel he puts it he doesn't want he didn't want us to see any butt crack when he walked away <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be like oh man he said he was gonna talk about me bad and he did <laughs> all right so i don't know um if you guys have any news or things you guys want to talk about that this is uh, this is like something really cool that i saw in my opinion um, this is the headline. Armed with her dad's gun, this 17-year-old girl fended off a wanted man who broke into her home. So thankfully, this is a defensive gun use situation. 17-year-old girl defended herself with her dad's gun from a wanted car thief who broke into her home while she slept Monday morning. When Kimber Woods of Spokane County, Washington, awoke, it was to the sound of someone breaking into her home. Luckily, her parents had warned her there was a suspected car thief on the loose in the area, so she had slept with her dad's gun under her pillow. That's, that's you know, really cool. Um, I'm glad that she was able to defend herself and that her dad obviously, you know, trusted her, you know, took her shooting and all that kind of good stuff. Police say they initially saw a stolen car Monday morning, but the suspect evaded authorities, fled on foot. Um, so her parents saw this on the, like, a morning wake-up show. With the gun in hand, the teen hid behind her makeup vanity, waiting for the intruder to come closer. When the man approached her, she pointed the gun at him and demanded that he leave. Um, and then she did some cursing, which is good. The suspect fled her home, stealing her, her boyfriend's ATV on the way out. <laughs> Kimber <laughs> so, so, And her name is Kimber. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. I wonder if this was a Kimber that she had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she fired a shot at the ground as he ran. The sp suspect is still at large. He actually got away. He got away pretty good, man. He's pretty <laughs> lucky, that dude. <laughs> Stole the four-wheeler on his way out. Yeah, you know, he 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 got away with that. But, thank you know, she didn't get hurt. He's still out there somewhere. People still have to be careful. You know, breaking into people's homes in, in Spokane, Washington, that's a little, you know. Yeah, that's a... Scary uh, proposition. Yeah, that's probably not. Okay, so here we go. Here, I'm going to lock the screen on you so we can see this. There's bullet holes. <laughs> yeah. It's aerated. <laughs> yeah, so this was a uh, how to shoot an AK video. So I thought this would be kind of a cool um, <clears throat> idea for a test, albeit a little bit expensive. You see a couple that hit the front trunnion there. The, yeah, the front of the I mean, yeah, of those are, are they still in there? Uh, yeah, they're kind of like, yeah, there's a jacket. Actually yeah, I can on. see like something brass in there. Exactly. Right there, there's a yeah. jacket. Nice. And then there's one, let me find the one that went. Is the barrel yeah. bent? No. No. Does it, is this a little I don't straight? think so. I think the receiver's bent a little bit. Oh, okay. We did get one that went through the barrel. Whoa. That, that really surprised me that it punched um, through. It didn't, it didn't come out the back, but there is a, like a bump. Okay, I have to watch this video now. <laughs> this was uh, M855A1. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the newer 5.56 round that the Army uses. So they no. nice green tip. Okay, I've heard about it, but no. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like... Uh, oh, okay. Try and get this to focus a little bit. but it, So it's got an exposed steel tip. No, no lead. Mm -hmm. So there's a copper slug behind that. Okay, the, uh, yeah. Copper jacket around it. So I believe that I've got... I don't know where the bolt carrier group is. I'm not sure. I've got another box of junk. How did you come up with it? How did you decide to do this video? <laughs> well, while I was lost, the guy that robbed the guy that um uh, asked to look at it was the one I was having the conversation with. 
and I'm probably going to take credit for it because it's my channel and I'm on air right now, but um, mm -hmm. I came up with the idea. Yeah, go ahead. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> to do, uh, you know, how, how to shoot. I forget what we were talking about, but then the, the phrase how to shoot whatever, how to shoot a Glock, how to shoot whatever kind of gun. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that'd be really funny to do how to shoot an AR mm -hmm. and AK, but then just set the gun up and shoot it mm -hmm. you know, with another gun. So that was kind of where that play on words is kind of where it came yeah. from. Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms, who's on the show with me sometimes and sponsors my channel, he says, <laughs> what is he? Hold on a second. A Yugo AK Rami would have been more worthy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, ha I own an IO, and I've done a couple of videos with it. Uh -huh. One of the more recent ones was some Magpul furniture that I put on, and everybody was like, I cannot believe you shot this end pat, you know, mm -hmm. to death. But yeah, you and you let the up. I.O. You let the I.O. go. You dressed it up. Like, How does yeah. your I.O. work? I mean, I know I.O. has like a bad rep. They've got a bad reputation out there. Um, have you had any problems with yours? None. Um, and that's – so the funny thing is I got – I know I'm probably making a bunch of noise right now. I cannot find the bolt here. The reason I was looking for the bolt is because mm -hmm. uh, one of those rounds went through the, the part of an AK bolt that the spring – the recoil spring goes in. Mm -hmm. It's like a loop. Went through both sides of that, in one and out the other side. I couldn't believe that that it actually went through both sides. But yeah, um, my IO has been great. So it had two problems um, initially. Uh, the magazines suck. Uh, they're actually I might have one right here. They are uh, like uh, those a pro clear, the see through ones. No, they're like okay. a pro mag looking. Oh, oh, actually, pro you know, mag. It might, have been, it might have been in that gun when I shot it, but um, okay. uh, they're like a waffle style. They they look like these. I know I have. They basically look like this. They have like this pattern on the sides. Oh yes, 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 yes. So they look just like this, but they're not mm -hmm. pro mags because I asked him. I asked the guy if they were, and he said no. But um, so you couldn't. I couldn't fit more than twenty six ish rounds in them. If I tried more than that, it would, they would get real stiff, and the gun wouldn't even chamber. It couldn't even strip that top one off. Wow. And I O said to flip the uh, spring around, mm -hmm. put it back in, okay. and I did, and it was the same. So I didn't. And then the front sight post, and I don't know if this end path is the same way. Yeah, it looks like it is. And I, my camera on my computer is not going to be good enough to show this. But on the bottom of the front sight post, the screw is split. Um, and they kind of spread it out, and that's what keeps it tight. And the front sight post on that gun was not spread enough. So as I shot, it would spin. Mm -hmm. So I took a screwdriver, and I just bent it a little bit, and then it's been tight ever since. That, that's the only problem that I've had with it. Other than that, it's been 100% reliable, shoots great accurate as any other AK that I have and um, I kind of I kind of I don't want to say I was hoping for it but I really expected there to be like something would break off like there'd be like some kind of fireworks and it would make for this really good video right but then it didn't break and I was like well it works okay and I got like a million comments of people that are like you're an idiot you don't know anything about AKs that thing's junk and it's like well you, know, you may think so, but it works. So what am I supposed to say? You know? Yeah, you know, here's one of the things. Um, there's good companies that make guns, and every now and then they make some guns that suck. They're mechanical things. And then there's companies that have bad reputations for making guns that don't work, and every now and then they make some guns that work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very right? true. It just kind of goes like that. You know, it's the luck of the draw. So, yeah. I, I mean, I don't Do you have those? Do you discriminate against guns like that? Um, I don't like uh, you know people get mad if you if you have a high point or this gun or that gun for example are you like that? I own a high point, so no, not, not at all. And um, the the thing high points is it, I think that's a little bit of a different sort of category. I don't think there's a lot of competitors for high points because they are super cheap, but they work. And if you take a like a hundred people and you ask them what they think of high points, like ninety seven of them are going to say how shitty they are. Um, if you take 100 people that own high points and mm -hmm. you ask them what they think, it'd probably be backwards. You'd probably find a few that are like, ah, it was a real piece of crap. But in my experience, most of the people I talk to that actually own one say, it's heavy, it's ugly, but it works. It does what it needs to do. If that's what you can afford. Um, okay, someone wants to know, did you mean bolt carrier? I guess earlier when, when you were referring to, I don't know. Definitely the carrier. It did not, it did not yeah. go through the bolt. It, it went through the carrier. Yeah. Through the carrier. Okay. And then someone says, Sarah had a great time and wants to do it again. Um, <laughs> that can, you, I have no idea where that came from. Are you married? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, so that was Link, I'm sure, said that oh, because okay. he is the okay. fan of my channel who brought one of the volunteers to do the Never Shot Again oh, video. Sarah oh, was the okay. okay. Yeah, let's just explain that a little bit. We don't want anyone to think that, you know. <laughs> right. Sarah had a great time and wants to do it again. We've heard that before. <laughs> That's what we all want to hear. No. 
Okay. We didn't mean that, Sarah. Not at all. Okay. So, all right, that's cool. Um, so I can see behind you that there is a box from Liberty. That is that an AK Audic behind you? I see a Liberty uh, suppressor box. No, that's actually uh, this. Oh, that's that. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it looks like you're you're into AKs. I was just wondering if you've had a chance to shoot that AK Audic. Uh, no, and the, the funny thing is, that I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not really that into AKs. If people come away from this stream thinking that I'm into AKs, no, that would okay. be hilarious. You just like to torture AKs and shoot the crap out of them. Yeah, but um, no, I have not had a chance to shoot an AK. Audit. I want to though. So have you? Um, uh, are you making plans to shoot at any other guns with guns? I would love to, but um, that one cost me like six hundred bucks. <laughs> I know. So, uh, I was hoping that the video would do well enough that I could justify the next one, like shoot an AR with an AK. Uh -huh. uh, but it didn't really do that good, so it may be a while before I can justify yeah. another. Although maybe, an AR would be cheaper. Yeah, maybe you can get people to volunteer, send you guns that you could shoot at, or yeah, you know, great. you can buy some cheap. You can always find guns at a uh, at pawn shops. You know. True. And I mean, nowadays, like the king of pawn shops. Yeah. Do you go? What do you think? You know, let's have that little conversation about the industry. What do you think about the gun industry? What do you see? And then, um, you know, like I think right now we're gonna get we're gonna go into a period of time where it's gonna be really a buyer's market because they just built a lot of guns. There's gonna be a lot of guns out there at good prices. What do you think? I think we're gonna see more innovation than we have in the past. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I put like a year range on it, but probably in the last ten years, I would say. Mm -hmm. And and that's because I feel like the AR, like the you know the U.S. civilian market is so saturated with ARs right now. Everybody I know has like two or more. Mm -hmm. And um, for so long, gun companies could just, if they had it in stock or if they could just produce it, they would sell it. Mm -hmm. You know that was true for ammo, twenty two, most ARs. You know a anything, you name it. As long as they could just make it, people yeah. would buy. It. And now those days of people running up their credit cards and buying anything they can get their hands on just because they're afraid it's going to get banned are, you know, for the time being over, you know, probably at least three more years or whatever this three and a half more years mm -hmm. of Trump. And, and now, you know, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, cutting, you know, the share, the Shush Act or the HPA or whatever. And, you know, and the ATF is even talking about cutting other regulations. So I think right now it's going to be that time where people look back and they say, you remember when you used to be able to get PMAGs for seven ninety nine free shipping? And you remember when you used to be able to get, you know, all these deals that we see now. Um, but I do think that there'll be some more innovation because they can't just make it and sell it anymore. They're going to have to come up with some thing, something new, some reason to get people to buy it. Yeah, I think especially, well, if you go back to, to Obama when he got elected, you know, they were just selling guns like crazy. And then lots of people, it seems like, um, I'm going to say a, a year ago, the plan was the Hillary plan. So Hillary's going to get elected and we'll just sell every gun. That's and, right. And what we saw in the market where people were just like, like you said, getting into debt to buy guns, that that was going to happen again. I'm not sure how they convinced themselves of that, because I think that even if Hillary got elected, we would not see that happening because most people really, you know, I hate to put it this way, but they blew their wad. <laughs> They you did, know, yeah. First go around with Obama, and they just, I mean, you know, I saw guys like, I remember, I remember like in the evening or something like that, uh, you can get an AR for about, you know, five, six hundred bucks, right? And then the next morning, that same AR went up to about two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Delton Sports were two grand, MP Sports were two twenty five hundred. Yeah, there were some AR ARs that were three bucks. grand. You know, I mean, and I'm not talking like LWRCs or something that are usually three grand or, or 2,500, you know, to three grand, depending on what it is. And then in about six months or so, the guy who spent $3,000 on this gun, if he was taking it back to the store and trying to sell it, they wouldn't give him 300 bucks for it. They were like, yeah, we don't even want your gun. Don't even want it, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how you can you can see that happen and go, oh yeah, with Hillary, all of a sudden we'll get the sales. And the the weird thing is, is that if you look at the statistics, they're still selling a lot of guns because you've got a record number of NYX checks going through. True. Yeah, that's true. But, but I think you'll see more stuff like weird. huh? You know, they're doing more with the ACR. You know, the barrel uh, lengths, and they're going to do. I believe those caliber conversions are finally going to show up and. You know, other guns like the Tavor and just other stuff like that. I think you're going to see them just trying new things and, you know, just trying to make different stuff because they're going to have to make something different because people are sick of it. I shouldn't say they're sick of ARs, but everybody's got one. 
Everybody yeah, has one. multiple ones. You know, I think everyone's <laughs> got, mul there's like a NAR for every member of the family. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think I'm with you that to me, if, if I had to choose between an AR and an AK, I would take the AR, you know. Um, no doubt. But yeah, we def I think people want different stuff. And what I see a lot of people doing now is modifying their ARs or looking for different options with the AR, right? Yeah, yeah. And the, one of the things, and I plan to do a video on this really soon, is that... Um, you know, for, for the people that are still out there that haven't gotten an AR yet, and I have a couple buddies that just recently bought their first one, they're, they're usually going after, well, you know, they're so cheap now, and you can get a good one. You know, you don't have to get, like, a piece of crap all over lower. You can get a MP Sport 2 or, a, you know, Arrow, or you can get a decent gun for that five to $700 range. Mm -hmm. And um, and a lot of them that get the Ruger, the MP, or the, uh, like, Deltons and stuff, they, they want to get that front that fixed front sight off. You know, mm -hmm. and that, that's probably the, the gas block front sight. I want a long 15 inch handguard crew is probably the, the most common that I see now. And, the, and those people are not me and you. They're not people that have been into ARs for a while and already know, you know, all the ins and outs or whatever. But, mm -hmm. um, that and I still think there's a big market for affordable, decent um, optics or red dots. You know, there, yeah. there's the TRS 25 is a good one. Primary makes a good one. But, you know, I think there's probably some room in the $250 range. You know, it's, it's, it seems like it's, you know, 100, 120 bucks or 400. And I, I think there's probably some room there to, to make some more reflex style sites that fit into that category. Is that what you'd like to see from optics? So I know, you know, I spent a lot of time talking about ARs and there's a lot of cool things I'd like to see there. But what would you like to see optics companies do now? Because they've, they've been enjoying a, a run up as well where, you know, people are buying yeah. optics like crazy nowadays. And, there's a, and they're uh, affordable now. Right. I would like to see a one to four power that's lighter. You know, they, 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 they're nice because I understand where people are coming from that, you know, the, you get the quick target acquisition of a one power and you get zoom that you don't get with a red dot, but a lot of them are heavy. I mean, they're uh, especially compared to like a reflex site and then a bigger aperture. You know, I, I don't know why all the one to fours and one to sixes are 24 millimeter. I mean, I, I, I just recently got a Trijicon reflex site and then the window feels like humongous compared to some of the other sites and, that makes a big difference for me. So mm -hmm. I'd like to see more illuminated, bigger objective, or at least bigger eyepiece, one to fours, and then lighten them up. Yeah. I'd like to see a little bit more technology go into them. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've got the technology out there. I don't <laughs> understand why it's not creeping in. I mean, and maybe it will. I, I know there are some things that are like that, but they're in the more expensive on the higher end. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Walter says that he just bought a thousand rounds of two two three for two forty nine, after a fifty dollar rebate. Never seen that before. Yeah, that's. Uh, other than that, to me, Wolf Gold. It, it's almost ironic because of the, you know, stature of Wolf Ammo being a cheap steel case. But Wolf Gold mm -hmm. is. Uh, if I was going to stock up on, you know, AR ammo, that's what it would be because it's two twenty three that's loaded almost. The five five six, um, it's it's you know and you know really reliable and everything. It's great ammo, and I, I see that right now for two seventy nine, for a thousand, and, and usually like you know fifteen bucks shipping or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, to get to get below that, to get you know true like federal stuff for below that, that's incredible. Yeah, there's lots of good deals out there on everything. I think you're going to continue to see good deals all the way up to Shot Show, and then maybe after Shot Show, we'll get a. I think uh, there's I think there's some companies that are in trouble, yeah. and they're just going to fake the funk <laughs> all the yeah. way up to Shot Show. Yeah, that's true. You know, and then maybe after Shot Show, or headed towards like the few months between Shot Show and the NRA Show, things will get a little bit more realistic because there's a lot of companies out there that just. They just, uh, you know, bought new machinery, took out loans, did all that kind of, they overbuilt stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, it happens. They got caught out there. They really, you know, weren't looking at what's going to happen. So now now we have to deal with that. There are some companies that are still growing. I, I heard that uh, Sharps Rifle Company is going to build a factory here in Florida. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's, I just heard that today. I mean, that's interesting to me that, with all these other companies going through having their issues, Sharps Rifle Company is like, oh no, we're gonna, you know, I, I, I that's awesome. I think. Yeah, I think uh, Palmetto State Army strikes me as one of the people that really bet big on the rush after the election. I, I wouldn't put him in the, the category of being in trouble or anything, but 
just the deals and the way they're basically giving away PMAGs if you buy anything from them <laughs> just makes me feel like they've really got a massive inventory of this stuff. Who is that? I'm sorry, I missed that. Palmetto State Armory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Palmetto always has crazy deals, right? Yeah, but if you buy like a roll pin, they give you 10 yeah, free yeah, yeah. I mean, anything, it's, yeah. it's crazy. And, you know, uh, listen, PMAGs are the things that I would still buy. Um, you know, obviously you don't have to overpay for them. Uh, PMAX got really expensive. You couldn't find them for less than 50 bucks. Yeah. After Sandy Hook, I remember it. You could not find anywhere for less than 50 bucks. Yeah, I definitely recommend to people if there's deals out there. Like what I do is I buy a bunch of PMAX and just keep them in the plastics and I have them in containers. You know, yeah. Lola comes across those all the time. She's like, what, what the hell is going on here? I'm like, don't touch my PMAX. <laughs> right? Because you can't, I don't, I think that those are going to be good. Yeah. I, they're obviously, they're not going to spoil or anything like that. They're not going to, you know, it's not even like the shelf life of something like ammo, which is still really long. You don't really have to worry about, you know, keeping them out of the elements or anything like that. You just, like you said, throw them in the corner and, yeah, you know. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, I think this pendulum that we have is just going to keep swinging, you know. So I think we need to be realistic. You don't know if Trump's going to get another term. You don't know what's going to happen there with all of that stuff. And I wouldn't bet on any of it. I mean, it's, I think that politics was, was always bad, but in the last, um, in the, like the last 10 years, it got really bad. And then in the last six months, it just got ridiculously bad. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people going through that. All right. So, you know what, let's, uh, let's take a little break here, man, and hit up some uh, current events. You know, we were talking about you when you walked away, right? I'm sure. Yeah. I hope you guys were talking about the auto glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the auto glove thing. I don't know if folks have heard about this. You need to go look uh, right now. I see this. This is on the truth about guns, guys. Uh, this is an article on the truth about guns. Go look this up. I initially thought this was like an April Fool's. It says the new auto glove simulated <laughs> auto fire for pistols, rifles, and shotguns. So to explain this to you guys, um, and this is, this is uh, it says this is sponsored content on the truth about guns. So, I, I, but it seems to me, if you look at this video and everything, it seems like an April Fool's thing, right, William? It certainly looks like it. I'm trying to get the video up so we can watch this, this uh, yeah. person in the video have, launch one of these. Right. Have, you ever this, wanted to own, right, have you ever wanted to own a fully automatic pistol or rifle but didn't want to pay thousands of dollars? With the auto glove, you can now experience simulated full automatic rates of fire with virtually all of your semi-auto pistols. Semi-automatic rifle, semi-automatic shotguns, without modifying or attaching anything to your firearm. The auto glove, which, yes, it's a glove, can be ordered in a variety of colors and configurations. I feel like this is fake news. Depending on the model selected, the auto glove can be ordered with a pre-programmed configuration, a single shot, double tap, three round burst, or mag dump, or any combination to suit your need. In case you want to launch nine millimeters in the air like a mortar. <laughs> So if you guys can't, I mean, because you know this is going to go out on iTunes and everything, so you guys, you guys, you guys can't see this. Basically, it's a glove. You put your hand in it, and there's some like there's a motor that I guess articulates your finger or or does no, no, no. It looks like finger. It looks like a Nintendo Power Glove, but there's like a little eccentric cam on the end of it that spins. Yeah, and it just like he said has a little electric motor, and it just whirls around and keeps hitting the trigger, which I. I don't know. I don't want to. I'd have to do a little bit more googling, but I don't think that's okay. I don't think you can use an electric gizmo. Thought they already ruled on that, but anyway. Yeah, you know, and so there's a website and everything for the auto glove. It's called Auto Glove USA. You know, they're touting that it's made in America, and the <laughs> the price is three forty nine. Oh yeah, that's a steal. Yeah. Um, it strikes me as dumb as the put your finger on the trigger to turn the flashlight on. Do you remember that one <laughs> from last year? It seems like it's about that smart. Yeah, this is interesting. If this is real, and they're, they're going to – and so in August, I think it's coming out in August, they're going to put out the first 500 models Wow. for this thing. If it's real, I, I don't know. Um, someone says a wanking glove. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be more useful. <laughs> You know, I thought it was a prank all the way up, but I guess it's not a prank. It's like coming out now. We'll probably hear some more about it. They, there is video that they have there of it. Would you get this, William? Would I get what? Would you get this auto glove? 
<laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I've done some pretty silly things uh, uh -huh. in life and for sure on my channel, and I don't think I would want anything to do with, with that gizmo. It just strikes me as uh, really stupid. An accident waiting to happen. Yeah, people are asking if it's ATF legal. Who knows? Yeah, I would love to see if they've got a letter because, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure the, the whole electric motor thing is not okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll, there's, I'm sure there's going to be more of this unless we find out it's fake news. Man, nowadays you just don't know. You just don't know if you're yeah. dealing with fake news. Mike Bryan says I ain't Googling that. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's refusing to Google it because you're going to fall into a quagmire, a briar patch. It's funny. If you Google autoglove. It's, well, we looked at it and, uh, well, actually it did crash our window for a second, right? So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if it was because there was two YouTube things or what, but it definitely uh, yeah. crashed. It. Behind the scenes, we were looking at it and it crashed out our system and we had to restart. But um, someone wants to know what's up with the PMAG uh, 27. Um, what is this? PMAG 27 GL9. Oh, Glock 19. Oh, Glock 19. Mm -hmm. Round magazine. Oh, the round magazine. I haven't seen that. Have you? No, I have not seen that. Yeah. It's like a drum. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. That's. I wonder if that's coming out now. Yeah, I'm Let's not look it up and see what happened there. GL9. Let me. Uh, let me. Let me Google that. And see what we find on there. Um, I see that there's more. Uh, while 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 you're looking, you know what? You look that up, William. Also on the truth about guns, I saw this. Um, What's the name of this company here? Hold on, let me scroll up. Uh, NG2 Defense has a new 3D printed suppressor, the MaxFlow 3D. Oh, yeah, I've heard of the MaxFlow, yeah. Yeah, so from reading through this thing, it's designed to give you like less blowback. You know, they have a video there of where uh, they've got like side-by-side -side shooting and you can see less gases and stuff like that. Coming back, it's uh, a good article from uh, Nick Leghorn on the truth about guns. Um, I'm I'm curious to see what 3D printing does for the suppressor market. You know, like if it gives us. I know this is like a rough time. <laughs> There's going to be suppressor companies that are not making it through 2018. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I I don't know. I mean, the H, everybody wants the HPA to pass tomorrow. I, I know I certainly yeah. do. Um, I, I got to admit though, man, I'm not one of those people that. That, that says run out and buy a suppressor right now. I just, I don't get it. I don't even know why people, I mean, I understand like to help the industry and everything and I get that, but I just, I don't know, man. I, I make a lot of my videos and I do a lot of my reviews from the perspective of somebody who has a limited amount of money and works hard for it. Mm -hmm. And I just cannot blame people for not wanting to go drop a thousand bucks and then wait nine months. I, I, I wouldn't encourage people to, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know if I should say I wouldn't encourage them to do it, but I just couldn't blame somebody for not wanting to do it. You know? Yeah, it's a tough thing, you know. Um, I I see it when I do suppressor videos. So I've done suppressor videos. They've never done as well as the other videos. And you know, when you're when you're making videos, no matter what you do, you're not you can't make a video and make it go viral. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do to um, you know to make your video do better and more people see it and all that kind of stuff. But you really, in the end, can't control how many people watch it. It's up to the people what they want to watch. And I just noticed that with um, with suppressor videos, you don't get as many people watching because there's not as many people interested. They don't want to spend the money up front, pay two hundred dollars, wait a whole bunch of time, and then there's still a bunch of restrictions that go beyond that. You can't take it anywhere in the country that you want so easily. You can't. You can, I think, if you get a letter. Yeah, I think but, the crossing state lines is more for SBRs, but um, is it okay? Yeah, there's there, there's a there's a bunch of right. things. Yeah, no one wants to get into this whole thing, and I understand it. I, I would say, so you know, to me though, it's fun. I think it's fun and enjoyable to have these things, and it's too bad that we have to go through the whole process. Yeah, you know, um, I think it's a safety issue. You know, a lot of us are going deaf. It doesn't matter how much hearing protection you wear. You know, um, I, I think we should all have suppressors. Uh, and, and there's other countries. I mean, there's countries that have draconian gun laws, but right. you could just go buy suppressors and blister packs. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I've I've heard this anyway. There's several places in Europe that if you shoot a gun without a suppressor, you're like a, you're like a jerk. Like, yeah. Some places you'll get fined, and other right. places you're just like you're like that guy. Like you're just like you're driving right. without a muffler on your car. 
Yeah, but so what's the likelihood? Here, here you go, Lola. What's the likelihood of us actually getting this stuff, though? I know you, you were talking about the Hush Act and all that before. There's lots of different things that are getting put forward. Do you think any of these things are actually going to go through? Yeah, I, I think the HPA in some form uh, will go through. I'm not so sure about the whole removing 922R, you know, that version of it. Um, but, you know, because Trump's really big into American stuff, and one of the things that that newer – I think it's the SHARE Act is the one that allows for the imported ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm not so sure how keen he would be on that one because um, I think the original HPA was would have made it so that only American companies could, you know, they couldn't import them. Um, but either way, I, I think the HPA in some form will go through under Trump. I just, no matter when it happens, it's not going to be quick enough for any of us. You know? Yeah, the, the thing that I think when people ask me about it, I say look at the, um, the health care issue and uh, repealing Obamacare or reforming or repeal and reform, whatever you think is going to happen. The more difficult that is to do, the further away we are, I think, time frame wise of these things happening. I know there's people saying, oh, there's some secret stuff happening in the background and they're just going to force it through. I, I don't know. I mean, if you can't get Republicans, you know, they have the majority, they have the super majority, and you can't get them to get together and agree on this stuff. I'm not mad that they're not agreeing on it. I think that, hey, if we're going to do this thing, do it right. But, yeah, you know, no, we, we, we're going to get caught up in that, and that's going to take a whole bunch of time. And what's the likelihood that other things are going to go through while we're trying to push that through? What do you think? Not very good. I mean, you, you could tell that you know, Trump ran on that. He has it a, had it a big part of his campaign, and I think it's a priority for him. And I don't think he's going to start, you know, tabling that and, and forgetting about it just to do, you know, to give us suppressors or to do anything else that, you know, most of those politicians consider to be frivolous. So I think you're right. I think until they sort out the things that they consider to be a high priority, we're probably not going to see movement on these littler things that we want. I will say, though, that tax reform is another big deal for Trump. And if this, and you saw this last time, the last time the healthcare thing you know, stalled, he said, all right, fine, then we'll fix the tax code instead. Mm -hmm. And since one of the things that we're going to do with HPA is remove the $200 tax, yeah. a lot of people think that it may get added as a rider or whatever you call it, you know, bundled in with some sort of tax reform, which, you know, that is its best chance. For, for a bunch of politicians to get together and, and agree we need we need more gun or gun-related things is almost never going to happen, I don't think. No. But, but if the right people – attach it to something else that they think is important, that's that's probably where you'll see it go through. Yeah. And I think also like I'm not I'm not trying to tell anyone it's impossible. Nothing's impossible. What we have to do is not get complacent, you know. So when these senators and congressmen go home, when they come back to your state, you have to do whatever you can do to to let them know that we're not forgetting that they're out there, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know. I think that is one of the struggles of things things like the HPA and like, you know, any NFA item at all is that the, the people that have gone through the wait, you know, there's like a big chunk of those people that kind of feel let down. That I, I've talked to people who are like, suppressors are cool, but they're not wait nine months and pay $1,200 cool, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so then you got left this subset of people who are like diehard NFA guys and they like, you know. They'll, they don't, they've got their trust and they'll do all the crap and then, you know, they just like, what, what's, uh, who is this guy that said, buy it and forget it, uh, Safety Harbor, order it and yeah. forget it. And there's people that are like that and they say, you know, I'll get two or the three ballers. things. The ballers, that's, that's Walter. Walter's a baller. Yeah, or they'll get two or three in the pipeline and they just remember to go do one every now and then and that way they've yeah. kind of always got the stuff coming in. That is, that is really what you have to do. I mean, I'm teasing Walter to say that he's a baller, but honestly, if you're going to get into the game, you have to do that, right? Yeah, it's true. But th that leaves this small chunk of people who are just not going to influence politicians. It's just not enough emails and not enough, you know, wanting and yeah. crying to really get any kind of yeah. movement. I think once you get into it, you realize that this is really convenient. And to me, it's convenient. Uh, I don't think in every in every case that you can go without wearing hearing protection. I think you should probably still wear hearing protection. But it, it's uh, yeah, it's convenient. Um you know, it, it keeps from annoying your neighbors to some extent, <laughs> even in cases like mine where I live out in the country and I have a lot of property and everyone around me shoots and all that kind of stuff. You don't always want to necessarily call attention to that. Um, but, you know, I think the only way that we can do it is somehow we have to stay motivated and keep up the pressure on these guys and let them know that we're not forgetting about it. But then you also have to ask yourself, like, what do you think about this healthcare thing? And honestly, for most of the country, and even for us gun guys, it's important. We 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 need to deal with this shit because 
this, this situation is only going to get worse. Yeah, well, that's you true. Know, if you're young and healthy, maybe you feel like, you know what, who gives a damn about health care? I don't need that. But you're going to get old. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have problems and it's gotten like under Obamacare. I mean, it got really, really bad. And so it is a thing. Hopefully it gets fixed up. So, you know what? Let me jump over. So people are asking about the PMAG 27 GL9, which I think is a let me see. Um, so what is this? I'm trying to I'm trying to um, look it up right now. I think it's, it's like, like a, a. It's just a stick yeah. mag. It looks like Magpul's uh, version yeah. of 33 it, 27. Yeah, it's a 27 round Glock 9 millimeter handgun magazine, featuring a new proprietary all polymer construction for flawless reliability and durability. Oh, durability over thousands of rounds. I mean, we've already got like 33 round magazines out there, but I guess Magpul's putting it out, so it's awesome. Well, I will say this. I love Magpul. I think they do a great job. I think their stuff's mm -hmm. well thought out, well made. I haven't bought anything from them that I was disappointed in. With mm -hmm. that said, I do not get Magpul Glock Max. I just I don't get it at all. I don't know if you're talking about a uh, you know like a metal. I don't know if I've got one handy. You know, like a metal, um, you know, mil spec kind of a magazine, or you know, not not marine yeah. spec. But yeah. Okay, so there's a difference, right? You know, these the feed lips will bend, blah blah blah. You could argue all day about metal versus polymer mags, but at least they're somewhat different. But but from what's wrong then, with a what's wrong with a Glock mag? That's what I'm saying. What are you even getting? From, I mean, other than the Magpul logo, I don't even know. What you're, they're not cheaper. They're, I mean, these aren't expensive. I don't know what the. I don't know either. I I don't really. Maybe you're getting a, like a red follower. <laughs> it's just sexy. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what the. Uh, I think maybe there's people that just yes, it's a Magpul, so they want to support Magpul, and um, that's basically it. I, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I like him as much as anybody, but I still kind of don't get it. Yeah, someone says if suppressors become legal before the six twelve opens up for orders, I will be suspending way more. <laughs> I will be spending way more to get the six twelve. So, have you, do you know what the six twelve is? Yeah, that like rotary shotgun. Yeah, revolver shotgun thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I I don't know. I think that um, Cry Precision was supposed to have bought a factory and gone into production on this. I don't know how that's moved along. You know, in this particular environment, uh, Cry tends Cry Precision tends to have money because their stuff is expensive. Everything else that they sell, I mean, they make you know they make good money on that. It's like Gucci. The tactical guys. I see Richard Monder. I think is that how you say that? Monder said the the, the new P Mag for three hundred blackout. Which um, I mean, I could understand the the reliability thing, and I watch Magpul's little video, and I, I get what they're saying. But mm -hmm. the, the more and more I hear about three hundred blackout, the more it, it uh, kind of contradicts this whole. All you got to do is swap your uh, barrel thing. You know, I mean, if you're already going to go to special mags, I mean, that kind of reduces the appeal. I think. Yeah, why would we so cue me in on that? Why would we have to get special mags for 300 blackout? In the Magpul video, the way they described it is that um, sometimes the shape of the bullet, because you know, 300 blackout uses this varying, you know, all the way from 100 and probably what 115 or 130, 40 grain bullets all the way up to 220, and the shape changes, so they don't always sit in the magazine correctly. So there's like points in the magazine that like locate the rounds in pop up okay. And those points change when you have 300 blackout. So sometimes they put excess pressure on the outsides of the magazine, or the bullets just kind of dig into the front, or they'll, they'll face down in the front, and they don't feed reliably or whatever. But um, the best way I could probably explain it is that Magpul seems to have uh, requirements that go way above and beyond. It's the reason they don't have a see-through magazine, right? Because their requirements seem to be extremely strict. Yeah. And and so and for them to even reason. Find it, I mean, it's tough stuff. Sure. Typically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for them to even find anything wrong with putting 300 black out of the 556 mag just shows you how deep they dig, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that they get in the video. They said they've got some specific customers, you know, probably super fancy black ops guys or whatever that you know uh, need, need that kind of reliability down to that level. But um, uh, have that's you ever? I mean, do you have anything 300 blackout? You ever did any shooting? Yeah, I kind of hate it. So I make uh, oh. several videos on it. Not, okay. I, I shouldn't say I hate it, but um, I kind of uh, – what I hate is BS, and there's a lot of BS around 300 Blackout. So a lot of times I'll make videos to point that out, and, um, and you know, some people like it, some people don't, but 
uh, yeah, I do have an AR pistol. Pistol. So what's risk. the what do you think of the bad points of three hundred blackout? Just slow. I mean, you know, I don't like seven six two by three nine for the same reason. And I think you know the Soviets switched to after Vietnam. They saw what the five five six did, and that's kind of why they went to the five four five. And um, you know, heavy heavy slow rounds like that. And I'm using the word slow relatively. They tend to mm -hmm. um, they don't yaw. They don't fragment. Most of the bullets that people are loading into 300 blackout are meant for a 308 at 2,800 feet per second. And now you got them in this tiny case launching them at 18 or 1,900 feet per second. And, you know, the, the subsonic stuff is even worse. So um, yeah, I just so, feel like it's mm -hmm. more money for no real tangible benefit. Okay, I was going to ask you if you think there are any good points about it. Well, um, I do think that the, the main benefit to it is that you? It's not so easy to have that kind of capacity in a 45 AR. Mm -hmm. So okay. you know, this whole subsonic thing is, in my opinion, they're they're kind of worse than a 45. But um, I see what people are saying when they say, "Well, uh, I can switch. You know, I can go sub or supers," and that's pretty rare. If you look at a lot of other guns that reliably cycle subs and supers, uh, it's not common. So I think for like a neat switchable range toy, I think that's cool, mm -hmm. and I could see why people get enamored with it. But as far as what you would actually do with it, like, what would you do where you're like, okay, I've got subs and now I need to switch to supers right away. And I have to I'm use not, this. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, what I, what I like 300 blackout for when I shoot it, I have, I think I've got one 300 blackout gun. It's, it's a nice, uh, it's nice to suppress it. Sure. You know, um, that's about it though. So I don't know why I would even want to, and, and what's suppressed, I probably would want to go subsonic. I mean, for the reason that I would use it, maybe inside the home. You know, if yeah. you're using something, yeah, I don't see myself switching over and making every gun I have 300 blackout at this point. So the one of the biggest, you know, things that sets it apart is the ability to switch from supers to subs. And I have yet to mm -hmm. meet anybody who has, like, people will say, like, you know, um, well, hunting hogs, right? So that mm -hmm. the other, like, if you got like a pack of feral hogs, you know, the other hogs don't hear the gun as well. <laughs> ask, it's like so the sound of a hog getting shot to death doesn't scare yeah that squeal that's it goes a little bit quieter yeah that's i've like, never yeah. actually hunted hogs but i've looked at a lot of videos and they squeal like when you touch them let alone shoot them to death yeah man they squeal like hogs right <laughs> you know or like is that what is that saying a stuffed pig <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah so, you know what, I, I'm not trying to knock it. I understand there's lots of people that like it. I think it's good to be suppressed. Um, it's, it's good to be like to get shorter barrels and all that kind of good stuff. But I don't, I, I wouldn't switch every single gun that I have over the 300 blackout at this point. Yeah. So, you know, but it is becoming more popular, right? I think it's becoming more popular. The rounds becoming more available. Yeah. But then, but then there's like other rounds coming in, like six point five Creedmoor and all, you know. Yeah, there's. I mean, it's. I don't think that it's. Well, I shouldn't say that. It probably is the most popular boutique AR round. I mean, I, I'll admit that. But you know, regularly when I look, because I get these uh, email blasts from ammo companies and you know just retailers online, and I I usually scroll through them for one to see if there's any good ammo deals, and two, a lot of times I'll compare like just nine and forty just to look mm -hmm. at. Retail what the differences are lately. And a lot of times I'll look at 223 or 556 and 300 blackout and consistently you see 300 blackout for 40 to 50 cents around, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. and even like the cheaper seller in Beloy, like the cheaper stuff, it's still 40, 50 cents around. And it's like, I don't know. Yeah. And the, other th th the, the thing that I don't understand is why people want like every gun that comes out to be 300 blackout. So Tavor came out and was like, oh, I got to have a 300. I'm going to wait till the 300 blackout version comes out or the X95 or this gun or that gun. And I, I don't necessarily feel that way that uh, because it, I don't know. I guess if it's if it's a boutique gun to you, there are lots of people that are buying this as a pretty expensive gun, and then they think, okay, if anything happens, if the shit hits the fan, I'm going to be running around with this gun, and it's going to be 300 blackouts. You might run into an ammo situation. <laughs> yeah, definitely. For me, if 223 is not enough, I'm going to 308. I mean, to me, yeah. that makes sense. You got like, it's it's if you want to talk about versatility as far as like the types of ammo you could get, there's everything you could think of. You got cheap surplus. Full metal jacket stuff, fancy mm -hmm. match grade, you know, super, you know, accurate uh, Sierra Match King type stuff, hunting stuff, expanding, fragmenting. I mean, you name it. Um, that's to me, that makes a lot more sense. And you know, people 
the big argument for 300 blackout is that you change a barrel on your AR, you're good to go, right? And then it's like, well, the magazines are pretty damn good, but you know, as it turns out, you probably should have a specific magazine. Mm-hmm. And if you really want it to be quiet when it's suppressed, then you should probably have an adjustable gas block. Yeah. And it's just like one, and it's like, well, it's great from a short barrel because it, you know it uses pistol powder, but it's not really going to be that quiet unless you have a 16 inch. It's like all this contradicting stuff. It's like, man. Use your 5.56 AR, and if it's not enough, go get a 308. You're done with it. Yeah. Now, the best 300 blackout gun that I've shot, I think I was talking about this last night, is the um, Spikes Tactical has the compressor. Okay. You ever heard of the compressor? And it yeah. is like uh, SBR 300 blackout suppressed intricately. Oh, yeah. Full. Uh, well, the one I shot was full auto. <laughs> Baller, right? Yeah. Good <laughs> luck to anyone getting that. I mean, I know there's people who are going to be able to get that. Um, but that was pretty badass. Yeah, that's cool. You know, but that, the, mm-hmm. what's it called? The Leonidas, I think it's called, is a integrally. The, I don't know if it's a can that's like made into it or whatever, but it's from Liberty. That's like a one piece during a blackout upper or whatever. Um, yeah. We were talking before about um, changes and stuff in the in the gun industry, and where that's probably going to be the biggest innovation and the and the biggest change that people don't see coming is if the HPA goes through, it's going to be integrally suppressed. Prior. everywhere like, yeah that's gonna be a huge deal and one of the one of the smartest things that i've seen is ruger came out with those integrally suppressed 1022 takedown yes barrels. i saw those very that cool yes idea they will they will never be able to keep those in stock if the hpa passes that is yeah that is so smart but there are lots of companies that shot did you i, I think i asked you if you went to shot show did you go no, I went to NRA, but I didn't go to NRA. Shot. Yeah, so at Shot Show, I don't, I didn't, I don't remember talking to anyone about this at NRA, but at Shot Show, I was talking to a lot of the suppressor companies, and they all have shelved somewhere integrally suppressed barrels. Some of them uh, like trickled it out a little bit, or they put this thing out, or that thing maybe pulled it back. But yes, if that goes through, you're going to see those everywhere. You know, and the the price will probably come down. It'll. Um, yeah go up for you know it'll be like any other initial inventories out kind of a spike and then it'll yeah it'll be they'll they'll level out much lower than where they are now yeah so you know i think that would be great because i really enjoy that you know and i think that you can get uh like a normal length thing you so you can you get that you know one tax stamp or i think really even if you go sbr i think if it's integrally suppressed and a shorter barrel do you have no you don't have to do two things right just get nope, as, long as, as long as it's overall but, yeah i, I mean if you don't have well see so here the thing is if suppressors come off our sbr is going to come off <laughs> yeah i mean I hope, yeah. But, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah that's something to think about right <laughs> yeah i met um i think it's kg kg made suppressors i met at the iraq veteran shoot day thing Mm-hmm. I think it was there. I went to a suppressor shoot at the same range, so the two get conflated in my head. But mm-hmm. anyway, they've got a they've got a 1022 barrel that you. Um, it's not like the takedown one; it's a normal one. And um, I asked him that same question because it's it's like a four inch barrel, and then the rest of it is all suppressor. Mm-hmm. And but they said it's just one stamp. Yeah, because if it's that length, you're good. Yeah. So just imagine if that actually does go through, we're going to see rifle length uh, integrally suppressed barrels just everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah you'll see uppers. I'm not, I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't buy a normal barrel. Well, yeah. I mean, I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. Not for something like an AR. I can blame you. Yeah. No. No. So I mean, that would be a great thing if we get it. Um, yeah. Do you think? So you were saying that you think there'll be a spike. So what do you think happens if? Uh, I know we're getting back into the suppressor, into the suppressor conversation. But what do you think will happen if they do come off? Do you think the prices are going to go up, then come down, and get really cheap? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think initially it'll be. Uh, I, I hate to keep using the term, but I think initially it will be um, like five to ten times the price increase. You know, I think that um, because of high demand. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, um, you're going to have companies that uh, have relatively low production capabilities. You know, the, all the suppressor. If if you're talking relative to other things, um, suppressor companies are tiny. You know, the, the number of things they can produce compared to something like an AR lower. Yeah, or, I mean, unless you're talking about, like, how Ruger, was it Ruger that's getting into building suppressors now? Yeah. Yeah, Ruger builds them. And, and the thing is, you don't know, like, Ruger's obviously got capacity, but how many machines do they have cranking out suppressors, right? Probably not a lot. Yeah, exactly. And um, they'll ramp up, but they're not going to ramp up as fast as people want to buy them. So I think initially you're going to see... You know, people selling them used for these crazy inflated prices, and probably for six months or so, it, it'll take a while before manufacturers catch up. And I think that 
you know, good quality cans like this, I think, will eventually come down to probably half of what they are now. Yeah. Well, the one thing with the good quality cans is that there's still material costs and everything that go into that. Um, you know, people think that like the good quality stuff is going to go down to a hundred bucks. I don't think that's going to happen. No, but there'll be, it'll be just like a, it'll be just like Daniel defense and, and Palmetto state armory. Right. I mean, there's going to be so many people that a hundred dollar can made of mostly aluminum is going to be enough for, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I mean, there's a rebel in Texas. They sell hundred dollar cans now for 22s all aluminum 99 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I and think, like, and then a lot of guys are just going to make the throwaway ones that might last. Yeah. Thousand, exactly. couple thousand rounds. Sure. I mean, would you yeah. pay 50, 60, 80 bucks for a can that lasts two, three thousand rounds? I mean, if yeah. you really think about the volume that your average Joe shoots, it would take someone a long time to wear yeah. out. What's the, I always ask that question. Like, how many, I, when I go into gun stores, I ask them, like, how many rounds? Someone buys an AR from you between the time that they buy it and then for some reason that AR winds up cycling back to the store and being sold for something else or whatever. How many rounds do you think they've put through it? I usually hear between 20 and 50 rounds. <laughs> That's true, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think you'll see 3D printed. Um, the, the problem with 3D printed stuff is the volume intrinsically has to be so low because those those processes are just very slow. At this um, point. Well, yeah, but one of the things, so what I said about the prices and the time frame is true if, if it's just United States companies. If they can import those things from China, you're going to see stamped baffles and – crappy quality thrown together cans that will flood in however long it takes a boat to get from china yeah. to here that's how long the, <laughs> the price yeah, or people are going to make those adapters right like i see some people talking in the in the uh, behind the scenes chat about um the oil filters <laughs> now now those are now those adapters those are going to be like maybe oh, 10 man. bucks <laughs> wicks and fram are going to go through the roof yeah <laughs> yeah those are going to be cheap man that's going to be like a race to the bottom you know, you'll just have you know, like everyone. I'll have those on my keychain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it. Look, we're all looking forward to it. It would be Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I promise, I will vote for Republicans <laughs> for a long, long time if we can right, get that. Right. You know, they're going to get reelected by gun guys for sure. But we'll, we'll see if we get that. So there was a comment here about. Uh, let me see if I can go through this. Um, uh here we go okay so link link high rule 03 i still want a firearm that fits inside the shell of a star trek phaser <laughs> Is this a, do you know this guy <laughs> he, uh, yeah a little bit yeah he was one of the like i said he was the guy that brought the volunteer yeah, oh, he used to okay cool wisconsin. yeah he's funny <laughs> he lives in wisconsin now yeah he is really funny yeah man that would be awesome sometimes in the comment section and like you know mm -hmm. how I don't know what it is about YouTube. It, it gets to a point where they quit emailing you. It happened to me with subscribers, thankfully, and this is probably a good thing. Eventually, mm -hmm. I never changed the setting. It just quit emailing me when I got a subscriber. Now it just mm -hmm. quit emailing me when I get a comment. It just doesn't anymore. I didn't turn anything off. But um, Yeah, there's some weird stuff going on with um, YouTube. I mean, I, I still get all of those things. It separates it in my thing. It okay. separates all the comments into a completely different, like, um, category. That but sometimes I'll get, like, a... Uh, email string of like 20 in a row where link is just going off in the comments and he cracks me up man. he's, he's really yeah. funny so um let me you know i want to talk about your channel for a second here now I, i'm not gonna lie i have not seen a lot of videos on your channel you know i could i could have just pulled that thing where i was like man you know i watch all your videos you're so awesome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could have done that but you know i, I just because you are in i have a i have a group on youtube called gun folks on youtube so, on, on Facebook. Yeah. yeah, on yes, it's on Facebook, but it's called Gun Folks on YouTube. And um, you know, how did you get in that group? <laughs> Someone invited you. I was it the Fire Mountain Outdoor guys, probably. No, no, no. Oh. If, if it wasn't you, it was um, the AK guy. Could have. Is his Brandon in there? Oh uh, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Could have, it could have been Brandon. Yeah, he he lives in the same town as me. Yeah, so it's a good thing. And this is what we're supposed to do out of that group, like get together. You know, today I was thinking, and for anyone else out there who's got a YouTube channel, you're doing gun stuff, and, you know, you like what I'm doing for some reason, you want to get on here, hit me up. But, you know, I was thinking like, man, you know, who should I talk to today? And then I was thinking about you. We've had like brief private message conversations. So, you know, 
Um, I, so I decided today to look at your channel, but there's no way in hell because you've got hundreds of videos. Yeah, I think I'm over a couple hundred now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's no way in hell I'm looking through all the videos. But the one that caught my eye is you have this video on a, um, a high speed camera, the Kronos uh, 1.4 high speed. Yep. So, so you would, is that your camera or were you testing it? I was borrowing it. Um, I'm hoping to borrow it again. Uh, maybe <laughs> um, so aimed research is a company that uh, rents cameras. He does a lot of uh, like the phantoms, you know, the hundred thousand yeah. dollar big high speed cameras. So he rents those and he's got better prices than I've found anybody else online. And uh, luckily he actually lives uh, in the same town that I grew up in, in Ohio. Oh, cool. Uh, like two minutes from my dad's house. So um, i Forget exactly. I think I was just Googling stuff and I found him or whatever. So he's loaned me some cameras in the past. And uh, this is a new, I'm going to call it affordable because for a high speed camera, it is affordable. Um, yeah, we're looking at, aren't we looking at like $3,000? Right. So that's not necessarily affordable for most people watching this. But relatively, I camera. mean, how many frames per second? Yeah. This thing does um, at 1280 by 1024, it does 1,057 frames per second. Yeah, and it'll go up to 21,000 frames per second if you can deal with the little postage stamp resolution. Yeah, if you bump it down a little bit. But that's a big deal. I mean, when you look, I was looking at some of your footage that you put on there from there. It's impressive. Yeah, and it's, like I said, it's it's certainly um, as good or like the, a good example is a camera by a company called Fast Tech. And I looked it up, and I think it was something like a thirty to $35,000 camera. And mm -hmm. this one's better. It's, it's flat out better. It, it yeah. saves faster. The resolution, it's just everything you can name about a camera, this one's better. And it runs off of a battery just like a DSLR. Yeah. On top of that, a battery that you can buy on Amazon for 20 bucks. So you got an hour, hour and a half, I think it lasted for me, and you can buy more batteries and charge them up. That is so what's it what's it recording to? SD cards. Oh, and SD like, cards, okay. In like H two sixty four, like a normal format that I can dump into my you know, I still use the uh, free Windows Movie Maker. That's what I edit all my videos with. No, really? Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> And, um, you know, that's like caveman days, man. What's up with you? I know. <laughs> so like phantoms record in their own proprietary format. You got to get a converter and convert it. And, mm -hmm. but, uh, and the $30,000 camera, you had to have power. You had to have 110. So, oh. um, so, or, yeah, okay. so this, thing is, this thing is a big deal uh, for me personally. I hope, I hope to get to use it some more. And uh, certainly for the gel, the gel stuff is really sweet. And uh, Jeff at how flater mouse, he got one of the first ones like ever, like, like the first or second prototype that the guy made and he's been using it for a while. He gets some really good footage too. Yeah. So the only thing with that is you have to get your lens, right? What kind of lenses does it use? Um, um, Canon type, Sony type, or it, are they it, just different adapters? It's got an adapter that you can use either one. So there's oh, uh, cool. the bodies threaded for whatever their thing is, but the guy sells both adapters. So Nikon F mount and then I'm sure whatever the Canon. Yeah, I thought it was a cool video. I know that you were concerned that no one's going to watch it because it's not gun stuff, but I like the behind the scenes thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it's if you've ever filmed anything with high speed, it's a challenge. Using those cameras is tough, it, and I make all my videos by myself. Yeah, so that, that adds a little bit. That of it, that itself challenge. is a pain in the ass. Yep, it yeah. is. But so, a lot of people have to do it. I have to do it every now and then. But anytime I have to do it, I miss Lola because she does. She helps me out, and whenever I have to do a video by myself, I'm like, man, <laughs> this is. Yeah. Rough, yeah. Do you do those videos where you hold the camera in one hand and then you're you're like messing with the gun with the other hand? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I do that sometimes, and um, I, I try and do either tabletop where the whatever I'm talking about's on the table and I'm just holding the mm -hmm. camera, or I'll just stand in front of it. Yeah, it's tough. Man. Yeah, it's not easy. You you poor guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I'm just, I know that sounds sarcastic, but it's. <laughs> It's a pain in the ass to do your – so you, you do your own camera work. You edit your own videos, right? Yep, yep. Okay. So what um, – tell us about some stuff that you have, like, you know, other than that video, some new stuff that you have or something you've got in the works coming up for the folks out there. Because you've got – you know, your channel to me is it's a, it's a you know, decent size, man, 29,000. We, yep. we, you know, this, I encourage it, people to go subscribe to you so you can crack that 30,000 mark. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I am excited. Any of those milestones, I mean, you you know probably better than me that anytime you get to one of those chunks of numbers, it's always satisfying to see. Yeah. You know, I remember when I got to 1,000 subscribers, and I'm not that huge. I think we just hit 53,000. Okay. And when I got to 1,000, I was like, what? <laughs> I was I excited that about that. Yeah, so, 
you know, um, and and I think that along the way, as it as it as it gets up, it's still it's still exciting to me. And there were lots of people along the way that helped me out. I think when I cracked over a thousand, that was because of Eric from Iraq Veteran. That I, oh, nice. I, yeah, I think I met him at Shot Show or something, and I was telling him how I had like a bunch of videos, and so he was like, "Yeah, how many subscribers do you have?" And uh, I said, uh, "I don't know. I had like six hundred or something." He was like, "Yeah, we'll do something about that." Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, he shared it out, and I think I got, I hit like several hundred subscribers in a few, you know, in like a few hours. Wow! Yeah, that's so. Awesome. Yeah, that was a big deal. So those are you know those are good guys. So uh, what were you saying? What's what new stuff do you have coming? Well, I'm going to do uh, a couple more ballistics gel tests. And I, like I said earlier, I have this 458 um, SOCOM, and I've got like five different kinds of ammo for it. So I definitely want to do another um, 458 video. I got some new body armor in the other day that I'm from uh, Tactical Scorpion Gear. I'm going to do a couple videos with that stuff. And um, tell you what, man, honestly, I'm like living. You ever, you ever make like five or six videos in a day and you trickle them out? Yeah. Uh, get you high? And so that, that's kind of where I am. I'm kind of in that middle thing now. But I, I got to think of a good. Uh, a good test for that steel armor that I just got in because I've kind of done everything I could possibly think of with steel armor, so I struggle sometimes. But maybe I'll combine okay. the two. Maybe I'll do a 458 versus <laughs> versus armor. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'd like to see you do some more stuff where you shoot guns, but we have to get someone to donate the guns to you, yeah. um, folks. I know that you know sometimes people cycle in and out of this. I think you answered this before, but someone wants to know how long you've been doing this. How long you have you been doing the videos? Three years. Three years. Okay. That's that's decent, and then uh, some someone else wants to know if you have any recommendation on body armor based on your uh, tests and stuff like that. What would you recommend folks go out there and get? So I always I, I get that question a lot because I have done I, I can't even count how many body armor videos I've done, and the best way that I can answer it is that in my opinion, body armor falls into two categories. One of the categories is if you can replace your body armor tomorrow, mm -hmm. or if you cannot. So that could be a money consideration. Maybe you don't have money to buy more armor. Maybe the shit has hit the fan and there's no more internet, no more stores to buy armor from, right? Right, so right. You're planning for that, then you should buy um, level three plus, the plus is super important, steel body armor from mm -hmm. AR500 or there's a, there's a few companies that make the, the really good stuff. Spartan, AR500, Caddy. I don't know if you pronounce that C-A-T-I or Caddy or whatever. Right, mm-hmm. So if you're if you're like I want one set of armor and I'm going to use this through the apocalypse, right. then you can get the best level three plus steel body armor that they make. Um, if if that's not your consideration, if you want you know light armor or you want yeah, I was going to say I mean weight is a is a factor here, man. If you exactly. wear that steel armor, I think I would rather have speed, even though I don't, I don't want to get shot either. But <laughs> a lot of people do. And you know, if you're like, well, I'm going to go to work and wear this armor for eight hours a day, then steel armor doesn't make any sense, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if it's like a apocalypse type of armor, I say steel. If it's a, I want something lightweight, mobility, I can, if, if it gets shot or broken or dropped or run over by a truck or whatever, I could just buy some more tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then I would go with um, a level a, a level four plate if you want maximum protection. And, and level four plates basically are universally ridiculously tough and similar for that matter. Um, and then there's also some uh, level three plus stuff in the ceramic world, but uh, really it's level four or steel. That, that's pretty much the two options. And it's, you know, I got to have this last me forever or I can replace it. I okay, replace cool. It level four. Right. So, um, and then we've got another question. Best ammo you've come across so far from the ballistics that you've done uh, in terms of a defensive round? So for handguns, HST. Okay. I've shot a lot of handgun rounds, and Winchester Rangers are great. Uh, Gold Dots are great, uh, but to me, HST is the class of the field for handgun ammo. And then, uh, if you're talking rifle stuff, it's there's a little bit. I mean, we're, we're saying defensive. I would say um, for 5.56 five, stuff, anything bonded or anything that fragments really reliably. So the 77 grain open tip matches or fusions. F fusion is a really good round universally in just about any rifle caliber. Okay. Cool. So, you know, let's switch gears here for a little while. Uh, are you into movies, man? Sure. Yeah. Are you into sci-fi stuff? Uh, not a whole lot, no. I oh, no. Say. Okay. You're not into sci-fi movies. Well, one of my favorite sci-fi movies is Fifth Element. Have you ever seen that? 
Yeah, I love The Fifth Element. Yeah, I mean, I watch that movie like several times a year. So I'm excited because this movie, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, is coming out. I think it's coming out this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So that's kind of like, um, it's not Fifth Element remade, but it is by the same filmmaker that made Fifth Element. I think it's based on a really old graphic novel. Okay. And I'm, I'm really, I don't know if there's anyone else out there excited, looking forward to this. I know I am. It looks really badass. There's lots of, you know, sci-fi gunplay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't, uh, I never heard of it or didn't know anything about it, but I can say if you told, like you just did, mm -hmm. the dude that made the development made another movie, I would probably, and I hardly ever go to the theater, I'd probably mm -hmm. go to the theater to watch yeah, it. Yeah, it's a Luke Besson. He's been working on this for years. Okay. And it looks kind of like, um... It's kind of, it looks up there with Avatar. Oh, okay. You know, Avatar was a big sci-fi movie. I mean, it, it looks it, it looks like it's a lot of fun. They've been, you know, they've been teasing it for a while. You've got Rihanna in it. You know, you've got lots of, I mean, one of the things I like about Fifth Element is all the, the shooting. Right. There's lots of shooting, lots of explosions. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not, it's not really realistic stuff, right? But, you know, we go to the movies. I don't know about you, but I, I don't. I don't necessarily need realism when I go to the movies. I kind of go for escapism. I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, it's like a it's a movie, right? I mean, the whole you know, if I want reality, I'll go to work. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't do. I mean, people ask me that a lot. Like, do I go to the um, do I see like the war movies or all these tech, you know, where you've got um, special operators and all that kind of stuff? When things are more realistic, I do watch those things, but I take them so seriously. Yeah. Right, and and sometimes they're depressing because these are these are things that people actually live through, and to think that you know what we did to guys and all that kind of you know how they go out there and like Dunkirk, for example. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to watch that. I would want to watch it, but I know that you know this is something that really went down, and this is where people, lots of people really died. And at the end of that, I'm not going to be in a very good mood. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You know, so I always have a hard time coming. What what kind of movies do you like to see? Um, I like action movies and comedy movies mostly. I would okay. Say. Have you seen what's what? Because I don't go to the movies a lot. So when's the last time you went to the movie theater? The last time I went to the movie theater was I think um, London has fallen, maybe. Wh or, what? <laughs> it's been a while. I hardly ever go. It's a movie. long time ago. <laughs> did you like that movie? Uh, yeah, I did. I, I like both of those movies. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that uh, Butler? Uh, Gerard Butler, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. It was decent. It was a decent movie. I didn't see it in the movie theaters. I saw it uh, when it came out on Netflix, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, like I said, that's a long time ago, man. Was that in 2016? I doubt it. <laughs> I don't know. It was a while ago, yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, so you don't go to the movies. <laughs> Not that often, no. No. Okay, cool. All right, so I guess well, I'm barking up the wrong tree here, William, <laughs> since you don't go to the movies. <laughs> um, someone wants to know, uh, oh, someone wants to know if I've shot a 10 millimeter. Nope. Um, my brother is a big fan of 10 millimeter. He keeps telling me that I need to do 10 millimeter stuff on the channel. I haven't, I haven't shot one. I haven't, so I don't have any experience with it. What, what do you think about 10 millimeter? Oh, I love it. I, I think it's a great round, and I think um, it's one of the few semi-auto pistol rounds that is actually appreciably different from the whole 940-45 kind of thing. You know, those rounds are all close enough. You know, and, and then 10 millimeter does a couple of things that you can really, you know, I think really sets it apart, especially the range, you know, like 135 grain up to, you know, 200 or 220 or whatever. And there's some cool bullet selections, you know, Buffalo Bore makes some hard cast, lead hard cast stuff and obviously the hollow points and stuff. So you don't put this in the same category with 300 blackout, obviously. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, from, a, from a price perspective, um, obviously, yeah, it's still like a, you know, uncommon sort of expensive to shoot kind of around but right um, how many 10 mil do you have any 10 millimeter guns glock 20 yeah just that one okay and you love it yeah i like it yeah i mean when i take new people shooting um i always tell them that you know, you're gonna have fun if you hit this is universally true if you take someone shooting your if you say hey do you like this gun you know they're always gonna say they have fun if they actually you know hit what they're shooting yeah i think at. that's why so many people like a 1911 because no mm -hmm. matter i mean it hits Unless there's something seriously wrong with it. Yeah, great trigger, right. And um, so I uh, 
I'm much better with a rifle than I am a handgun. I should practice a lot more with a handgun. So <laughs> handguns are like they're cool and they're fun, but like I don't get like super excited about them just because, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I should I should practice a lot more. <laughs> right, we all should, man. We're all lacking in practice. Yeah. Okay. So you like that? So um, someone wants to know what you think about the G two research rip. Yeah, I think that is a complete gimmick. Um, I think it's completely BS, and I think that uh, that falls into the category of people that are. I use the phrase study for the exam. So some of these people make rounds, and I think Lehigh does this a little bit too. They make rounds that are specifically for YouTube. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they make rounds that are specific. <laughs> they look a certain way on YouTube, yeah. and, and they get people excited. It's a reality. publicity stunt. Yeah, they don't actually do the thing. Yeah. That, that this round will rape you and then shoot you <laughs> and rape <Right>. you again. <laughs> yeah, so I don't buy into any, any of the fragmenting handgun stuff. I don't. Handguns only wound via crushing tissue. So you want something that expands good, mm-hmm. penetrates good. That, that's what you need. Those those Liberty Defense, you know, RIP type of rounds are crap. Oh, okay. So someone wants to know, does any company make big boy armor? I did. I actually typed an answer to that, and I, I, oh. I, I assume that he means the, the actual size of the plate. Yeah, like, um, uh, oh, you mean bigger armor or for bigger bigger dudes? Well, it'd be yeah, it'd be kind of be one and the same, but yeah, mm-hmm. you can get plates that are actually bigger. You can get eleven by fourteen plates that are bigger than the normal ten by twelves. Sappy goes up to XL or maybe even two, um, and then a lot of the carriers have a ton of adjustment, a ton of adjustment. So um, as long as you get the right size plate, you know. Yeah, right. right, absolutely. Okay, so you know what, man? I think uh, you know we've been we've been going at this for some time. We should probably you know wrap it up. I think it's been a good conversation, man. I really you know. Yeah. I enjoy time. talking to you. It's always fun meeting like another gun guy who's into cars. You know, yeah. and we should definitely do it. I mean, I invite you if you've got some big stuff going on to come back. Um, sure. is, there, is there anything you want to point people to, or you want to? Let's plug your social media, man. What social media stuff are you do you have? Um, I have a like, I, I have Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So I have you know pages for the the you know YouTube channel and all of those. Um, but you know, if I was going to ask anybody is, uh, you know, just to subscribe, I mean, that's really one of the things that and liking videos helps us out, you know, you know, m- more than pretty much anything else. So, yeah, absolutely. I think it's a big deal to get out there and subscribe. I know sometimes YouTube goes through and, um, I don't know how to put it other than to say they call your subscription. So if there's someone who's subscribed and they haven't done anything in a while, they might drop them, yeah. you know, so definitely go back there and make sure that you're subscribed to the wound channel. Definitely. Yeah, and then, but if people do want to find you on social media, should they just search for the Wound Channel? Yep, yeah, they're pretty much all. If you just search for the Wound Channel on any of those three, um, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, it'll. it'll pop up. Yeah, and I think uh, on Facebook you're just William Wound, right? No, I've got an actual the Wound Channel page on, on Facebook. Oh, you do? Okay, cool. Just cool. Type in the Wound Channel, it'll it'll pop up, and I don't put every one of my new videos on there, but I, I try and put you know uh, m- most of the new uploads and um, you know share some some links to some other stuff. Okay, so where are you? How about Patreon? Did you get into the Patreon thing? No, nope, never really did it. And, uh, yeah, I think I set one up. I think at one point, and then I deleted it, or or maybe mm-hmm. I just messing with it or whatever. But yeah, never, never really did that. Too much extra work. I don't know. I just um, I I never wanted to give people the impression that I was just in it for money. And I know that you know, there's you know, not all YouTubers are like that. Not all YouTubers that have Patreons are in it for money. I shouldn't say it that way, but. Um, you know, I kind of uh, do this as a hobby, and I have a lot of fun doing it. And you know, uh, I don't know. I just, I just never really. It's if the channel grows. The channel grows, and I get bigger, and I get more opportunities, like you know, to shoot, shoot up guns and stuff, like shoot holes in AKs and stuff. I mean, that's great. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I have fun doing it, and I learn a lot, and I, I hope everybody else does too. So. No, absolutely. I understand. I mean, it's not everyone's bag. You know, I get it. I, I don't feel comfortable like, you know, people put it in a category of e-bagging and stuff like that. But I think there are folks out there who want to support, you know, so. Right. That's a th- yeah, that's true. There are a lot of people. And that, and that surprises me to some extent that, you know, I always kind of thought of YouTube subscribers as people that like they're specifically there because it's free. That's not always true. You know, there's a lot of people who really believe in the type of videos that we make and the type of. Yeah, they no. want to see us. They want to see us do it, you know, and and right. not get discouraged by it. I mean, if you're out there shooting up guns, and and you know, people enjoy that. And I think some people understand, like maybe this is this is not your full time gig, right? Right. Yeah. So there's folks like me, like for example, this is my full time gig. 
Exactly. You know, yeah. And I think people understand. And even if even if it's not your full time gig and you work, they know that you can't necessarily do this all the time. But they enjoy what you do. They may like the you know maybe they want it. They want to see you get a high speed camera, do more high speed stuff, or you know I'm sure the ballistic gel is not cheap. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those blocks are like 130 bucks a piece. And yeah, can, yeah. I so I mean that. Like, yeah. If I send five of these rounds, can you shoot them into gel? And it's like, man, can you send me the gel and I'll buy the rounds? <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So all right, so you know what? I don't want to, because I know like you're probably hungry. I'm I'm ready to eat. <laughs> the folks yeah, out yeah. there that have been yeah. hanging in there. So I want to um, thank everyone for watching this. Um, you know, we were just talking about Patreon. If you want to support us on Patreon. It's slash Hank Strange, and we appreciate it. Of course, I appreciate the people that also sponsor us and help us keep the lights on and do all this kind of stuff, like Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, and um, Andrew's Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns that actually gave us this space here in their warehouse that we use and, and help us out with the broadband and all that kind of stuff. Thanks to everyone making the comments and all that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Wound channel. Help him crack over 30,000, right? Yep, definitely. And I just want to say I appreciate you having me on. I had a really good time. Uh, you know, I thought it was an awesome conversation. I'll definitely be back if you have me back. And definitely, you, you know, for shouting out the channel and letting everybody know to try and push me over the 30,000 hump. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Sweet, man. I look forward to having you back, man, and talking about a lot Good. of stuff. All right, guys. Peace. We're out yep. of here. We're gonna we're gonna sip on the blood. <laughs>